Hey everyone, my name is Matt Cryptic if you prefer. I'm a 3D artist and my goal is to teach you how to learn 3D. Whether you're doing things in Blender, Maya, whatever, some of my tutorials will be based on one app, some of my tutorials will be based on all apps. Uh, today we're talking about Maya's Hypershade and how to import materials from Substance Painter into Maya, both the manual way and the automatic way. The reason we're doing both is because it's important to learn how to work with the nodes in Hypershade. Having a better understanding of these nodes can help you as an artist and help you learn how to troubleshoot issues when you do come across them with Hypershade. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. All right, so we're in Maya and we're working off a project that I created a while back. So we have this grenade, which this was already exported to Substance Banner. The textures were made and they were exported from Substance Banner. I'll have a video in a later date for configuring Substance Banner to export to Maya, but for now, we're just gonna work with what I have. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the manual process of doing this. Now, remember, this is kind of an important thing to learn because you wanna know the manual process so you can know how to troubleshoot this. A lot of people will try to find the easiest way possible just to get their textures in and not really figure out how things are functioning and they will run into issues or they won't get the quality that they want out of their models. They won't look exactly like they did in Substance Painter. So this is what we're gonna do to help kind of understand the process and learn the tools, especially the nodes, because there is a lot of confusion surrounding the nodes. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is open up our Hypershade and figure out what we're doing here. So because this model was built in Maya and we exported it to Substance, we already have our material ID set up. So it's gonna make this process a little bit easier, but really the main takeaway from this is learning how to import and manage the textures and the nodes in Hypershade. So we're gonna go to Windows, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. And that's going to open up the big window, the big scary window that nobody likes and everybody is afraid of because, it, you know, it's complicated. There's a lot here. So we're working in a blank space here. We have no material, but the first thing we're going to work on is the body of the grenade, right? So we want to get the first big chunk in. So we're going to hit tab. Tab is going to bring up your search bar so you can search for any of the things that are in the create section. You don't have to use tab. I just find it's faster. So just type in AI standard surface. This is generally the model that we're going to be using to put these materials together. And you can see that gives us the AI standard surface node, as well as an additional shader node. This node's gonna become important when we import our height maps into our displacement nodes. So the first thing we gotta do, is we need to start getting some materials in here. So we're going to go ahead and type, or hit tab, type in file and texture. This is gonna create another two nodes. It's gonna create our file node, which is where we're going to load the actual file itself. And it's going to create our place 2D texture node, which uses the UV coordinates to actually map it to the model. Okay, so with our file texture selected, we're going to go and hit file. We're going to open these new 4Ks. So, so these are where my actual textures are stored. So what we're looking for first is the body. So we're going to go ahead and import the base color because it's gonna be the first kind of texture we're working with. And then we'll just rename this to base color and that changes the name um, and this just kind of lets us know like hey this is the base color this it's just kind of easier for us to track there's our base color node so we could just start connecting things right away but I kind of like to do this a little bit differently so what we'll do is we'll do tab again we'll do file and then texture and then what we're gonna do is we're going to delete this node we don't want it we're going to use one of these it just kind of helps with organizational purposes and as long as you don't need to tile everything individually, you should be okay with just using one. So firstly, we're going to go ahead and load in our next image, which is going to be the height map. We're gonna skip emissive because this object doesn't have any emissive properties. So this is going to be our height map. So what we can do instead of having to tab search everything, we can just go up here, edit, duplicate, and then without network, and then just change this to height. And then we can change that file to this one. So that's going to give us our height. And then we can go ahead and just kind of do the same thing. We'll just duplicate and get all these loaded in here. Our next file is going to be metalness. We'll duplicate that guy without shading network. And then our next file is going to be our normal. And then one more time. And that's going to be our roughness map. All right, so with all those imported in, we need to get those connected to a place 2D texture node. And it's pretty easy. All we got to do is first drag the out UV cord down here. We're gonna do that with every single one of them. That way those are connected that way. And then we need to connect the top portion, which is the actual configuration data. So what we're gonna do is we're going to control middle mouse click and then control middle mouse click and do the same thing down here. This is just gonna copy the defaults and link everything together. That way everything is falling on one node. So if you have to adjust UV for any reason, which generally with these kind of materials, you don't have to. Um, you only have one place you have to do it in. So whenever you're working 
in Maya, if you're adjusting things outside of Hypershade, it's going to take you back to this Place 2D Texture 1. All right, so with that configured, we're going to drag all these back and then we're going to start connecting them. So we want to connect our color first. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go tab, we're going to do multiply, divide, and we're going to add one of these nodes. The reason we're adding this node is because if you're ever working with an ambient occlusion node, you can plug it into input two and then you can merge them and it's going to handle kind of that ambient occlusion shadowing. So what we'll do is we'll do our out color we're going to plug it into input one and we're going to take the output and we're going to plug it into the base color. So that's connected, that's good to go. Now what we can do, we're gonna look at this. We're gonna change this name to Grenade Body. And then we're gonna apply this. So what I like to do is when I look at my um, ID maps, I'll find my Grenade Body, which is the trigger body. It's this one. Yeah. So we're gonna right click, select objects with material. That's gonna select anything that has it, which is the body of course. And then we're going to just right click on our grenade body and we're going to assign material to selection. So if we minimize this, you can see now, once we actually turn it on, that we have our color. Our color map is attached. It's looking pretty good in Maya. So now we need to move on to the next one. So the next node we're going to do, we're going to do the metalness map. The metalness plugs directly into where you would think, which is the metalness. We're going to take the out alpha and plug it into the metalness. Now, this is where we need to change some settings. So we're going to click on our file we're going to change the color space to raw. So you go utility and raw. Then we're gonna to change to alpha is luminant. Now this is important because the map itself is exported with that color information. And in. so we wanna be using the raw color space because there's no filtering, there's nothing on it. It's just raw data. So we're gonna input that into the metalness channel, which is going to handle those kind of reflections and make the object shiny or whatever material we're going for that we exported from substance. So the next thing is the normal. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in bump 2D. We're going to insert that and we're going to go out alpha to bump value and then out normal to normal camera. And then once we minimize that, you should see that in your viewport. It's going to look terrible. We're going to adjust this a little bit in a second here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go color space raw. You can see again, nothing really changed, but we're just going to, we're just going to take that bump value and drop it down just a tad bit. So we'll do 0.5, see what the result is on that. It doesn't really change all that much. And you can change this in the viewport as well. So we'll look at, try 150. So you can see how that's lightening that up a little bit. We don't need a whole lot of bump value there. In fact, I think I'll just drop it down to about 0.75. And that should give me the value that I'm looking for because I'm not looking for a deep like indent. I'm looking for a pretty basic clean look. And we can test this real quick by going to rendering. We'll just pop a little light in here. And we'll just crank it a little bit. We'll just go to like 13. And then render Arnold. And we'll drop that exposure a little bit. Go about 10. Now we can see what we're working with. So let's go ahead and click back on that bump value and we'll increase it again. So we're gonna go back to one, just see what that value looks like. You notice we're not seeing it. So one other setting we have to do is we have to change this to tangent space normals. That's gonna give you the result that you're looking for. So I like it. It's still a little bit too much for me. So I'm gonna do point seven fifty. Let's drop just a tad bit more. We'll do 500 just to call it good. So we're just basically having that but otherwise that looks good to me. So a little bit easier to preview that outside of the viewport in render view. That way you can kind of see the result that you're getting. Okay, so that's our bump, our bump values loaded. Uh, we can just delete that because it added that in. So now we're gonna look at the roughness map. Roughness gets plugged directly into specular roughness. So we're just gonna take that out alpha. We're gonna drag it up here plug it in there. So that's it for most of our normal maps. We need to go ahead and make sure that we've changed all of these to color space raw and alpha is luminance. Do the same thing. The only one that we're not changing alpha is luminance on is your normal map. That one doesn't get changed. We've kind of gone over how to connect most of these basic nodes. And a lot of the times you don't need to get super advanced with these nodes unless you're doing a lot of like changes on the material level. And eventually I'll release a series going over nodes and what they do and how they interact with other nodes. But for this instance, we're just kind of learning how to connect everything manually so that when we do the automatic way, we kind of know how to adjust things. 
Personally, I do kind of prefer the manual way just because it gives you that control and that setup, but I'm not super worried about if I need it in a pinch, I'll use their automated way. Okay, so now we're gonna look at this height map. So what I'll do is I'm gonna drag this down here actually, and I just like to stay a little bit organized and keep my node graphs kind of as clean as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and go tab and we're going to add what is called a displacement map. That displacement shader is gonna create another one of these. We just delete it, we don't need it. And then we're going to take our out alpha and go straight into displacement. Same thing here, color space raw, alpha is luminance. So where do we plug this in? Because we don't have a displacement node on here at all. This actually goes into the main standard shader. So we're gonna take this, we're going to drag this node into our displacement shader. So you'll notice that when I clicked on that, it asks you what you're doing. We're doing displacement. We're gonna put that in our displacement shader and that's solid. So this is going to ruin your model initially. So if we look at this and we go to our displacement shader, here's our settings. Okay, so if we minimize this, you're not gonna see your displacement in the viewport. So one of the settings we need to change is we need to actually go to our object here. You need to go to the Arnold tab. We're gonna scroll down, go down to subdivision, and displacement attributes, and then we're gonna change this. So this is where this is gonna get a little weird. So we're gonna change it to Cat Clark. And then this is where we're going to change kind of our configuration on how it's handling this. So when you see iterations, this is how many levels of subdivision we're working with. So I'm gonna take this and crank this up to about five. You can generally float wherever you need to, but five should work for me. So we're gonna go ahead and do a render again, because this is where you're gonna see this, because this happens after rendering. So displacement maps are an awesome way to add detail after the fact. So your models won't be super heavy, but there will be a subdivision process during the render that is actually going to increase the overall geometry and give you that really nice deep detail. So if we go to Arnold, so you can see models ruined. We have way too much displacement going on. So we need to adjust that. So we're gonna go back to our viewport and in our displacement controls here, we're just gonna hide that because I don't wanna deal with it. Uh, we're gonna click on this. I'm gonna go down here. So you wanna move this in statements of one, right? So we wanna go 1.1, whatever. So we're gonna look at this and go 0.1, see how that does. So 0.1, much better result. That's kind of where we wanna float. So don't be afraid to adjust your displacement maps. You just need to go in integers of one because if you keep, if you move it all over the place, you're gonna get weird results and weird values. But now we've got the body of the grenade looking the way we want to. So it's a pretty high level overview of how to manually import your material into Maya from Substance Banner while using Hypershade. Hypershade is an incredible tool. It just takes a little bit to learn. So I hope this kind of helped with that. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to import another piece of the model in the automated way. So we're gonna go ahead and take our body material ID up here. And we're gonna delete it because we don't need it anymore. So next that we have is the trigger body. If I go back to viewport 2.1, we're gonna go over here there's a substance tab. If you don't have the substance tab, make sure you're A, using a more recent version of Maya. I think they started including it in like 2017, or make sure it's loaded. If you're not seeing it loaded, go up to Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and then up here, just type in Substance, and you'll see these two plugins, this Substance to Maya and Substance Workflow. Just click those, and you'll be good to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click Import Image Maps. So we have, so you'll see right off the bat, we get select multiple maps. So we're gonna click this, and then we're gonna look for the trigger body, which is the one that we're working with. So we have these right here. We're gonna select all of these textures. You'll see that we don't have an ambient inclusion. That's just because I didn't export one. If you have one, go ahead, import it. That's totally fine. Hit apply. So what does that do? That creates a material somewhere. So we're gonna open Hypershade again. We're going to clear our grid. And so we have this. So we're gonna graph this network. And you're gonna see this looks a little bit different. And this is one of the reasons why I like doing this myself because I don't like the way it lays these out automatically. You can see that our base color doesn't really attach to anything. It is listed, it is configured, but it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense on how it's configured. I still kind of struggle with how Substance actually maps this properly. So if we do a comparison and we graph ours, you can see everything goes to a point, everything has a flow. It all works. So that's why I do prefer the manual process just a little bit more. But anyway, we will graph this network and look at this. So the only thing that's really weird here is going to be our displacement shader. If we look at our displacement shader, the scale is going to be way too big. So we do need to change it. So I'm gonna change it to 
just like we did with the other one. And then we're going to select the trigger material, select objects, and then we're going to assign material. The other thing you need to do is make sure you rename this. So trigger underscore mat, that's fine. And so now if we look in our viewport, you'll see it's applied, it's assigned. We'll go ahead and do a real quick render just to make sure it's working. And we can see we don't have any crazy displacement, nothing's working, or nothing's working improperly, everything's just kind of showing up. Again, our lighting situation is not the best here, but really it's just to show this is how the materials are functioning and working. You could do both ways, it doesn't really matter. The manual way I feel is better for learning if you're still trying to figure out the hypershade as much as some of you guys are. Uh, the other way is if you know it and you know how to kind of reconfigure it because the manual way, or the automatic way I feel still doesn't do an awesome job it is just easier for importing all your textures and then just kind of reconfiguring. Um, don't worry about the green here, that's just the reflection from the metal map, but that's kind of it. So we'll just do a basic overview here real quick. We'll just graph this network. So again, we have one UV out coordinate. This place texture node is just mapping your texture to your 3D object. It's looking at your UV and applying your texture to your object, and it gives you controls over the scalability and the repeats. So, and you can kind of see that if I repeat this by four, it'll jack up our texture. But all that's doing is repeating your UVs. So, you don't need to have multiple of them. There's no need. You can route everything into one. So then looking at this too, we have our texture file nodes. These are all just nodes that pull in a file into Maya, control a little bit on how the color space is actually rendered and used in Maya, and then outputs it to the actual material itself. You have our bump 2D node, which is just a control node for your bump maps. It allows you to increase the intensity, decrease the intensity, whatever you need to do with it. Then we have our main shader, our main AI standard surface. So this entire thing is what handles all of the main connections. It also blends everything together and makes sure that everything is interacting the way it's supposed to interact. Then everything is output to the actual shader file itself. And this shader file is where our displacement map connects to. Now you notice when we graph this, our height map is gone. It's because Maya takes that information and just kind of bakes it in and doesn't leave the node out in the open. I kind of wish it didn't do this, but it's just something it does. But if you click on this and you right click and go displacement shader, you can still access all your settings there. And then if you hit this little black arrow, you can also access your file shader. So it's all still there. It's just not showing up in the hypershade. You can graph it if you want to by just dragging it in place and that'll actually put it in here. Um, it's still not going to drag in your file texture. So just kind of one of the finicky things that Maya does, but that way you kind of understand like this is how you take your textures, you apply them in Maya, and this is how you work with Hypershade. Hypershade has a ton of stuff you can do with it, including a lot of stuff that I've never personally touched. And so I will be trying to go over a series of going through nodes and showing you what different nodes do. Video is just kind of the start of it. So this is where we're gonna start going through some of the material setups in Maya and how we can use it to do different things. So that's it, that's a pretty good high level overview on getting your materials or your textures into Maya from Substance Painter. Uh, this does work for other applications too. So if you're using like a Megascans asset or something like that, um, getting these into Maya, into the AI standard surface shader is one of the first things that you really wanna learn because this is how you're gonna start texturing your models in Maya. Um, I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope you learned some things. If you guys still have questions, please leave me a comment down below. I will answer them as soon as I can. I answer every single comment that I can. If you're interested, the grenade model is free until the end of September. This is 2024 September. So if you're watching this in 2025 September, you're gonna have to buy it off of Gumroad, but it's affordable on Gumroad too if you wanna buy the model set. Um, with that said, everybody, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one and please keep creating.